the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire 15 verse 7 if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you hey uh, the power of fellowship if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire not not what you need to <laughs> Not what you need what you desire and it shall be what done for you listen to me child of god it is the experience of god huh, that validates our confession of christianity it is the experience of god that validates our confession of christianity until you experience god your confession of being a christian is not validated and look what he said there we begin to see something he said if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire it shall be given for you many people pray but they don't have answer to their prayer because they have not understood that there is a there is a way it works if you abide in me and my words abide in you then you will ask what you will and you'll be done for you which means until we obey the principle of fellowship we cannot enjoy the benefits of divine relationship god says i'm your father i'm your god but if my word does not abide in you and if you don't abide in me no matter how you pray you will not have it so anybody that is expecting to enjoy oh God, to walk in the answer of his prayers to see them must understand that prayers are not answered just because you prayed they are answered because of where you prayed the place where you pray from i'm not speaking of physical place spiritual position if you abide in me and my words abide in you then you will ask if you abide so if i am not abiding then i am praying i will not have it those who abide in the secret place have access to the deep things of god and will enjoy the treasures of god those who abide if you abide in me he said he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high the secret place is not physical it's a place of fellowship are you with me now if you abide in me so many of us want to enjoy god god says okay I, I love it but you must abide you must abide tell somebody abide he didn't say if you visit me he said if you abide if you study scripture well in the garden of eden when god kept adam when adam sinned bible says in genesis 3 from verse 5 he said and god came at the cool of the day the bible specifies a time god came and god said adam where are you now god knows everything true of us and god sees everything when god said adam where are you it's not that god did not know where adam is adam was missing at the place of encounter are you following me here the secret place is our place of encounter with god through fellowship so god came to the time of fellowship so it was not like a particular physical place but when god showed himself in the realm of the spirit adam was not there because he had sinned and fell from the place 
so god said where are you there is a question god is asking most of us where are you adam was a child of god but he was absent in the place god kept him the place of fellowship there is a place where you meet god if you are absent in that place you can't see god no matter how you pray so your experience of god does not just depend on divine relationship it depends on your commitment to fellowship adam where are you what a question and adam responded i hid myself god laughs you are not in the place of fellowship there are many of us we are no longer in the place of fellowship and don't forget this that Allah kabroski adam fell and lost fellowship he could no longer hear he lost all the treasures the glory because of sin you must be very careful child of god people that understand the value of their fellowship with god will not give themselves to anything threatening that fellowship when you understand the value of your relationship with god you will not give yourself to anything threatening your fellowship with god because when fellowship is broken relationship will be severed for example a man who understands the value of his wife does not play around with other girls I mean as if he does not sleep around he does not even try to play with them because that playing with them can lead to something else he does not even joke with them because he understands that this person can threaten your marriage same thing where you understand the value of your relationship with god there are certain things you cannot sit in a kind of place because you understand sitting here can push me to do something that will break fellowship people who live anyhow talk anyhow act anyhow are people who don't understand the value of their relationship with god they don't know it so they can talk anyhow they can afford not to forgive when you understand the value of divine relationship you don't struggle to forgive people because you know unforgiveness it becomes a hindrance of a man accessing the place of fellowship with god when there is unforgiveness in your heart bitterness worry anger pride it becomes a hindrance from you experiencing god when you know how important god is to you you will not allow bitterness pride even worry enter your heart when a man begins to worry even if god stand before him you will not see god as you start worrying the next thing god will say is kevin where are you because if i am standing in the place of the spirit with god i'm standing with god as i begin to worry i step from the spiritual realm i enter the carnal realm the physical realm so worry is as dangerous as fornication adam did not fornicate he, he ate a fruit worry is dangerous why because it is the state of your heart that qualifies you to have access to the place of fellowship your heart so it is not a room the secret place is not a room it's not a prayer room where you go there you sweep it you clean it no secret place is not a physical place it is the heart that is why when worries when jesus said he said do not be worried because you don't know what worry does to you worrying is a sign that you are depending on your strength for sustenance and not on the grace of god because if you depend eh, no worry means how will i do to come out of this issue how can i overcome what i'm going through that is worry but a person that understands grace he understands that physically i am weak physically i lack but because of his grace i am strong because of his grace i am rich because of his grace i am healthy but when you don't understand that you begin to worry because worry means you are looking at yourself by the eyes of the flesh because when you see yourself in the eyes of the flesh you will see your weakness when you see yourself in the eyes of the spirit you will see the strength of god in you when you look at the flesh you look at your family women women don't marry the ones that marry the divorce that's the eyes of the flesh but when you look at yourself in the eyes of the spirit you are more than a conqueror you are the light of the world you are an overcomer you are the salt of the earth the doctor gives you a medical report in the eyes of the flesh there is fibro in the womb in the eyes of the flesh there is a sickness in your blood but in the eyes of the spirit he said he became a curse that we should be blessed by his stripes you are healed so when you see yourself in the eyes of the flesh you begin to worry how will i do 
That's what Jesus said. He said, yeah, do not worry what you will eat. He said, look at the birds. Your father feeds them. He said, you are more valuable than a bird. Will he not also feed you? So, there is no animal. The reason why animals never starve is because animals don't worry for food. Because immediately you start worrying, you are telling God, leave me to take charge of my life myself. Don't worry. But your worries depend how you see yourself. So, you have worries, you have bitterness, you have stuffs of your heart. All these things, listen to me, the devil does all these things for only one reason. Satan does not want you to fellowship with God. The devil is not threatened by the anointing because he himself is anointed. They call him the anointed cherub. Have you not seen false prophets do miracles? They do it by which power? On this earth, there are many powers. Oh, just know that there is the power of God, there is also the power of Satan. He said, I give you authority and power to trample on serpents and scorpions and overcome all the power of Satan. So, Satan has power. He's not threatened by the anointing, but the devil is threatened by your fellowship because there is something fellowship does. <laughs> you know why? Fellowship is intercourse. If a, one time a man and a woman got married, and for five years they had, so for about three years they had no child, so we thought there was barrenness. We began praying, 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 and God said to me, "They have never had intercourse." I said, "Eh?" I went and checked. No, it was, it was one nine months like that. Why the girl had been raped before, so she was still traumatized. So there was no child. They had married, but there was nothing. Why? Because it is fellowship that gives you ability to take advantage of relationship and bear fruit. A child will not enter your home because you went and signed certificate in a court. Your wife will not get pregnant because you came here and I bless you. Until there is an intercourse and intimacy. No, no fruit. Same thing until there is an intimacy and intercourse with God. There cannot be fruit of righteousness in you. So many of us are trying to bear fruit, not knowing that they cannot be fruit without seed, and they cannot be seed without intercourse. They cannot be intercourse without fellowship. Every good marriage you see is not the function of prayer and fasting, is the amount of fellowship the couple has. Money cannot buy good marriage, building cannot buy good marriage, position cannot buy good marriage. Can I shock you? Even prayer cannot buy a good marriage. The only if you see a good marriage, it is a function of their commitment to fellowship. A man who does not fellowship with his wife will never understand her. If you see any home where they quarrel a lot, it's not because Satan has attacked them, it's simply because they don't understand themselves, and they don't understand themselves because they don't have fellowship. Listen to me, child of God never you make a mistake to think that you marry somebody and you pray things will be fine no listen to me the person you marry is your opposite just know that so the fact that your partner resists you does not make your partner demonic but when fellowship is there they'll be understanding and people will never people must not see things the way you see it they want to explain to them now the same way many christians are struggling and their marriage is not fine and they are crying and they are praying it's not still fine why because they have not understood the power of fellowship they don't talk they think they'll just come and pray and lift their hands and we come to church we are not knowing that that's why some people who don't even pray and fast when they understand that we must be talking it's the same thing you will now go to god the church now that does not have fellowship with god there will be no fruit a woman that's why if a man is abroad his wife is here and they are married can she get pregnant can she get pregnant over the phone that's how people are with God distant relationship and they are praying why am I not seeing blessings because you don't have fellowship if you abide in me if you abide in me and my word abide in you then then you shall ask what you want and God will give you fellowship the devil is threatened by fellowship because he knows what fellowship will do to you i'll tell you why you know in john 20 17 jesus said i'm going to my father and your father so relationship with god is a gift but fellowship with god is a choice 
by the sacrifice of Christ on the cross we have ate the sacrifice of Christ brought us into relationship with God but our own sacrifice brings us into fellowship with him Christ died for you on the cross amen but you don't want to spend time to pray to read Bible to worship they are walking around. Jesus died for me. I am healed. I am blessed. You will see nothing. There is no pregnancy with that intercourse. So our true problem in among most of us is not God. It's the apps. We don't want to give ourselves. Seems like, like a woman, a husband and a wife who don't want to talk. And they keep coming for prayer. No. Good marriage. <laughs> You will sit down and talk for three hours, four hours. Not, not that you on Monday you talk for two hours. They come and talk again on Tuesday. No, it must be consistent because nothing creates suspicion, doubts, eh? and misunderstanding like silence and distance. Something happens in your home and you talk, your wife is silent. You may think her silence means that she does not, she is threatening you, she is bold. You say, okay, I talk, you need to answer, eh? You see, there are stubbornness. Maybe she was staying quiet to respect you. When she now talk, you say, I talk, you need to talk back. You must say, okay, man, do it. Eh? You talk, I stay quiet, say, I talk back. I talk back. You know why? That confusion, they don't understand themselves. So it's not prayer. It's what? Understanding. 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 Look at families today. Families are broken. They are coming for prayer. Once you raise your children not to grow in communication, you are you are you are you are grooming a rebellion camp. When they grow, they will fight each other, and they will fight you because you were never speaking. Some of us parents say we don't speak with our children. You only give them money to for fees, money for. Don't worry, money cannot buy intimacy. There is no seed you can sow on the altar, and you know God. <laughs> The lie. There is no seed you can sow on the altar, and it makes God. It, it, you know, they. It is a product of fellowship. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then manta class kiosha. Then you shall ask what you desire, and it will be what. If you abide, are you following me here? So are we abiding in him or are we talking about it? It's time to abide. It didn't say if you visit or if you abide in him, it becomes a dwelling place. You must commit yourself to fellowship. It's a must. Some of us don't like commitment. People who are afraid of commitment and they get married, you that marry them, you will suffer. It means they don't want to talk. Everything is no, it is wet, it is wet, it is wet. They, 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 anything commitment, they run. <laughs> you will never have peace, no matter how you pray. Because intimacy and understanding is not a fruit of how much money is spent in a marriage, it's a fruit of how much time is spent together. Same thing with God. Intimacy with God is not a fruit of how you sweep in church, it's not a fruit of how you I preach. It has nothing. It's a fruit of how much time I spend with Yahweh. So you can come here and sweep the church and dry clean every day. Yet you don't know God. Because you are not spending time with Him. You are working for Him. But you are not walking with Him. Mark 3 14 says. And He called 12 to be with Him. That He may send them. To be with Him first before He send them. To be with him first before he sends them so you must be with him before he sends them are you with me child of God somebody say fellowship say fellowship so watch this now divine relationship is a gift we got by who? by Christ by his death we have become sons of God but you will be a poor son of God, a sick son of God, until you understand the power of fellowship. It does not answer your prayer because Christ that for you. See, if you abide now, this is your own responsibility. Come and abide here. That's why James 4 it says, Draw near to God, and God will draw nearer to you. So, so you have to come. And the Bible says, Jesus said in John, uh, John 6, I believe so. 
44 he said no one can come to me unless the father draws them then in John 12 32 he says when I am lifted up I will draw all men to myself it means the, 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 the gift of the Holy Spirit is a divine empowerment to commit yourself to fellowship you, if you cannot give yourself to fellowship it means that the love of God is absent in your heart I can go back to marriage when there is anything you love does not bore you am I correct if you love your wife spending time with her is not a prayer point because any man listen you see your time you see time you see time can I tell you about time time you know there are two great commodities on earth there is money and there is time money buys things but it doesn't buy things that time can buy money can buy a house they cannot make it a home but time can make it a home because time that you spend but let me tell you this the true measurement the only thing that shows love because nobody sees love the only way to measure your love is to check your time because your time is the price of love whatever you you spend most of your time doing is what you love don't be deceived you can claim to I, I, I love the Bible but you spend all your time watching TV you love TV don't deceive yourself the true measurement of value of anything or anyone is the time you spend with them or the thing <laughs> are you with me now time so we desire something he said draw near to me but are we ready to commit ourselves to draw near to him that's fellowship he said okay i have saved you now you draw near come closer no matter what you know of god there's something you don't know no matter what you have seen about god there's something you have not seen are you following me here no matter how close you are to god you can still go closer to him no matter you there is always another level there's always another dimension of faith so the enemy of your of your your promotion is your present level when you get comforted and and contented with your present level you lose the passion to push forward to move ahead to go closer to god to know him more the more i know him the more i want to know him why because when there is love for god in your heart your your response to your love for god is to spend give him your time give him your time your time your time for wherever a man's treasure is there shall his heart his heart his love be his commitment be his dedication be are you with me here draw near to god and he will draw nearer to you so i say what our fellowship is our response to the love of god in our hearts i i i i, I go to him because i love him so what am i saying i am not trying to force myself to fellowship with him his love i respond to his love in me there is something for example it's like okay this is my wife i married my wife she didn't come and tell me that sir come and marry me when i saw her something in me pushed me to go to her she didn't try to she didn't have to do anything for me to notice her something in me is the same thing when that something is in you call love ah you wake up at two o'clock you put off your tv you just kneel down or you lie down lord you are so good lord you are kind lord you are wonderful my god you are excellent excellent but that you have not paid her strength but that's not an issue because in the realm of love nothing exists except the lover and who is loved your problem don't exist your pain don't exist because it's a love cast out fear there is no fear in love there is no worry in love there is no death in love there is no pain in love it is the love of God that made God save us that same love prompts us to fellowship with him is that love that you are walking in the afternoon and you just say i am coming and you just rush and enter home 
the Lord is good. I will lift him up higher everywhere I go. You you always want to be with him because you, you love him. If you love him, it's not a struggle, it becomes a response. Stimulation. Are you following me here? Now, why is the devil afraid of fellowship? Why is fellowship so important? Why? The only way to become one with Christ is by fellowship. He said, For this purpose, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Have you ever understood that scripture? You never understand that? For you, think it means what? What does it mean to become one flesh with your wife? Can I tell you? Is sexual intercourse because in second Corinthians chapter 6, Apostle Paul says, He that joins himself with an harlot is one with her. In other words, when you have sexual intercourse with a person, both of you have become one. Uh huh. He now says, So fellowship with God is, is the same thing. When you fellowship with God, you become one with Christ. You are joined. You become one spirit with him. Fellowship. 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 God said in Romans chapter 8, verse 8 to the 9. He said, to him he foreknew, he conformed. To be the image of his son. Listen to me. Spiritual growth is the process of being conformed to the image of Christ. You get me? That's spiritual growth. How you know say man they grow? For grow means you are becoming more like Christ. Somebody is not you cannot forgive. You are becoming less like Christ. The more you become like Christ, the more you forgive. The more you walk in holiness, the more those things stop. The true measurement of spiritual growth is your ability to resist the desires of sin. The more you grow, the more those things I will not do them again. You don't fight again. No, I want to. I don't want to lie. I want. There's no fight because you have grown. Are you following me here? You have grown. You have. You are more than what you were before. Anybody listen to me? Are you sure? So that's spiritual growth. Now, they cannot ever be growth if there's no fellowship. Do you know? One day I was praying. God told me, He said, He said, Look at your marriage. I look at my marriage. My marriage was. <laughs> that was Sisu. My marriage was like this. I said, I, I said, I have my marriage like that. It's not growing. He said, It's not growing. You know, do you know that marriages grow? You never knew this part. Go and pray. Ask God to show your marriage in the spirit. You see your marriage. He was. And God said, Your marriage is not growing because there is no fellowship. You and wife, we don't talk. I said, Eh? I said, Okay, now talking means she starts in the name of Jesus Christ. I saw it. I understood. It's not growing. So there are certain fruits you want your marriage to bear. And your marriage is saying, I cannot bear them because I am not growing. Because fruitfulness is a product of growth and maturity which is a product of knowledge and not age so the more you spend time with your wife and talk your marriage grow in the spirit your marriage begins to, you are wondering now you are carrying your children your children are not your children your children your children would have been a good fruit if your marriage had grown but your marriage did not grow for 20 years your marriage is still one month in the spirit it has not grown why because it is not it is only fellowship oneness you grow one is because in the realm of the spirit, my marriage, I saw in the spirit, I saw a being. The being at the same time had my face, had my wife's face. And God said, That's your marriage. It was a, a being like a tree. But when you look at it, you see me, you see my wife, and we were one inside. I was not alone, and it was not growing. So it is possible for me to grow spiritually. And my marriage is not growing. But I have grown because for my marriage to grow, me and my wife, we must come together for therefore same thing for you to grow spiritually you and Christ must agree the desire of God is that we should be one John 17 I believe verse 20 Jesus said that they may be one as we are one one in us 17 21 so fellowship brings what oneness with Christ gives you the mind of Christ you become like him you think like him come on somebody you talk like him you act like him you walk like him you cannot live the life of christ if you don't have the mind of christ and you can only have the mind of christ by talking with him because you know you always say can't make i tell you my mind so you cannot know somebody's mind until the person talk to you not talk to you talk with you
God is talking to and with. Fellowship is talking with, not to. That is the difference between prayer and fellowship. In prayer, Lord, give me a job. Lord, give me a child. In fellowship, Lord, what is your will? Lord, what do you say? Lord, I, I want to travel abroad. Should I go? But in prayer, give me a visa. Give me a visa. Give me, give me. You are talking to. But in fellowship, you have to talk. He has to talk. Both of you must talk. Same thing like in marriage again. If there's a marriage and only one person is talking, that marriage will crash. The two people so say, no, me, I'm a quiet man. Forget. In marriage, there is no quiet man. There's no quiet woman. If you know you're a quiet man, don't marry because marriage is not for quiet people. That's the truth. Me know I am an introvert. I don't like talking. In marriage, you must like it. Because the success of your marriage depends on the, your talkingology. That's true. So, number one, fellowship brings what? Oneness. It brings what? What? Oneness. John 17, 21. Number two, fellowship brings growth. We have seen that already. Romans 11, 17. You see, if you are part of the vine, you will receive sap and you will grow. That's number two, right? Number one, it brings what? Someone say oneness. Number two, what? When you, have, when you are one with Christ, what happens? You grow. Number three, it brings fruitfulness. Show me John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Read with me. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Bears what kind of fruit? So, if, you're, if you are lacking, if fruits are lacking in your Christianity, it doesn't mean you should receive Christ again. People keep receiving Jesus every year. No, it means you are lacking in fellowship. If you abide in me, you will bear most fruit. So, number three, fellowship brings what? Fruitfulness. You grow. It makes you fruitful. How many of you want to be fruitful? What do you need? Fellowship. Number four, it brings the experience of God. Someone say experience of God. John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and I and my words abide in you, you will ask and it shall be given to you. Experience. Lord, heal me. He heal you. Lord, bless. He bless. Why? If you abide. So, you cannot experience God without fellowship. The experience of God. Your prayers are answered. Because you pray according to His will. How do you know His will if you don't fellowship with Him? You'll be praying your mind. Pray your idea. Pray your thinking. But in the place of fellowship, you have access to pray as he wants, as he desires for you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thomas said, experience of God. Number how many? Number five. It gives you access to the deep things of God. First Corinthians 2 verse 9 to 11. He said, the things that I have not seen, ear has not heard, God has revealed to us by his spirit to the deep things a person who has fellowship in God does not walk in blindness he's not confused because as you fellowship you receive divine direction anywhere you see failure is a place that divine direction was absent because if God is leading you he may lead you round he cannot lead you wrong you may pass through issue but you cannot end there but if you are ambi you know he says something verse 1 the Lord is my shepherd Huh? the Lord is mine you know so, some people they can say that some people eh, it's not the Lord some people their ambition is their shepherd they are being led by their ambitions and they will crash some other people their emotions is their shepherd when they get angry anger tell them slap her you slap her emotion when they get angry anger say pack your back and go you pack the back and go their emotion is their shepherd because the shepherd knows what is leading you there are people here no matter how we preach and they pray as they get angry forget don't forget what what the anger say do they must do first before they come down their emotion is their shepherd some people as if they look at a woman and they feel something they must follow her whether she's going to her they must meet her there their emotion is their shepherd number three other people the opinions of men is their shepherd so you can be led by ambitions 
you can be led by emotion or you can be led by the opinions of men what you are doing is what people told you you don't ask God anything Pastor Legusi, okay, let us say Legusi. No, now we're saying tomato. Okay, let's go to tomato. The opinions of men. They'll tell you that church is not good. He said, Occulty church. He said, Not true. The way I never see man of God, the wipe face without widening the chief. You just opinion. You, you, don't, you don't even ask God. You don't even confirm from God. Not true, not true, not true, not true, not true. But you put a false, not true, not false prophet them. And you have actually benefited from the grace. But because you are not stable, you are not rooted in the knowledge of Christ, you are carried away by any wind of rumor of opinion. So the Lord is my shepherd, or my ambition is my shepherd, or my emotion, or the opinions of men. But when a man has fellowship, he is led by revelation. He is led because he has access to what God plans, so he is led by revelation. Are you with me here? Are you blessed? Are you sure? Are you very sure? Number six. You are rescued from curses. You are what? Genesis chapter five. Show me verse five. We'll be jumping three verses. So all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. And he that's verse five. So how many verses? How many verses? Three. Five plus three is how many? Go to verse 8. Seth lived all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. At three verses, you go to verse what? Go to verse 11. So all the days of Enosh were 905 years and he died. At three verses, go to verse what? Go to verse 14. So all the days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. At three verses, go to verse what? Go to verse 17. So all the days of Mahalel were 895 years and he died. So the next death should come in verse what? 20. So all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. So the next death should come in verse how many? 23. Go to verse 23 now. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. Ah, he did not die. Normally, after in that family, after every three verses, somebody died. But he come down to this his own day of death. We have added three verses now to 20 now. So you should so 23, we should be celebrating funeral. True or false. But he says, So all the days of Enoch were 365 years and he died. And all of them, that story was three verses. The first verse, he thought when they were born. The second verse, what they live. The third verse that they died. Now go to verse 24. Let's see how he escaped that thing. And Enoch walked with God. So, what happened to his family members could not happen to him because he was fellowshipping. You can't be in the place of fellowship and the devil can touch you. How did he touch you? Before the devil could touch Adam and Eve, he had to make them leave the place of fellowship. In that family, after every three verses, they bury somebody. But when he came to his time, he didn't pray against death. He didn't pray against the curse. When he just fellowship with God, the curse, he was where the curse could not touch him. It's like, like, like a, a, an eagle fighting with a serpent. He carried the serpent in the air. The serpent just dies as they, as they go up. Because there is a place where snakes cannot breathe. But the eagle can breathe. He's laughing. He said, you want to fight? Let us fight. As they go up. As they go up. They go up. He will not kill the serpent. The serpent will die for lack. There is a dimension in God that Satan cannot breathe there. So if you keep fighting him, you may never win because you don't have strength like him. But if you enter God and abide there, then he cannot enter and touch you there. So you are there. In him I live, I move, I have my being. Number seven, fellowship glorifies you. Can I say glorifies you? Second Corinthians 3 verse 18. It says, as we look, we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Hiya Labaska. Bible says in the book of Exodus, it says, Moses went to the mountain and after speaking with God, his face began to shine. After doing what? What happened to his face? You know, say, Moses not be no. He spoke with God. He said, when he came back, the people could not look at him. 
he so much spoke with God that when he came back he was looking like the God he spoke with fellowship you don't announce it though when the thing enter you don't enter Moses he said Moses went and prayed and his face was shining he did, can I shock you he was not praying let my face shine he was not his prayer he was talking with God so how will you do God said okay take the write the law the ten commandments write the it's okay now make sure you write this commandment do like this when you go back tell Aaron to stand here anoint them he said okay sir as he left he said hey it's your face he said my face is shining he didn't know what happened by speaking with God he began to reflect him I told you about oneness when people see you they don't see weakness they see glory your body is strong every day there is no poverty in the glory you hear me there is no sickness in the glory no demon sleep with you in your dream in the glory those things don't happen you enter a dimension where where when people see you the devil is not scared of power he's scared of glory because the only thing that god does not share god share his power but he didn't share his glory satan has power anointing his power but he does not have glory that's what we see all glory belongs to you glory belongs to you satan cannot touch it uzziah touched the ark god kill him are you with me here so when you spend time with god that same glory comes upon you and your health your finances your life well, it shows forth the glory you become the headquarter of god you become the the, the perfect expression of the image of the invisible God to visible man when people see you they see like light begin to shine are you with me rise on your feet